Okay, so I'm going to do a video on how to recover your deleted files off your external hard drive, your computer, your USB stick, or whatever you're storing your data on. Now, your files on your computer are pretty much ones and zeros uh, on the hard drive. Uh, when you delete your files, uh, the computer pretty much turns those ones and zeros into zeros, saying that, hey, we can re rewrite over this section of the hard drive with other data. Now, when you delete your files, that's what it does. So you can't see the file anymore, no longer access it, so you think it's gone. But I'm going to show you how to get it back. Now, this would be interesting to do with a borrowed USB or external hard drive from a buddy or something to see what was actually on, on it. Now, I plugged in the USB drive, and as you can see here, we have a picture of a golf clubs and a golf ball. The title list looks like it might be a Pro V1 golfers out there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete these pictures. I'm going to move them to the trash and I'm going to permanently delete all the files out of the trash so the picture is totally gone or what we think is gone. Now if your USB stick doesn't auto mount when you plug it into your uh, your Linux machine I'll be making a video on how to mount the, uh, the USB stick manually. Uh, a little later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a program uh, fdisk-l and we're going to look for our USB drive in here and it's down here. It's a FAT16. Now if you don't know what you're looking at in here to tell the difference go ahead and unplug your USB drive as I just did. We'll run the program again fdisk-l Oh. and you notice the difference it's no longer there so just look for the difference when you're plugging in and, and unplugging your devices and you'll be able to easily find what you're looking for so as you can see it's right here we'll close this so we'll, we'll retrieve our pictures with a program called recover jpeg but first of all, I'm going to move to the root directory and then into the desktop as wherever your current working directory is, is where it's going to save the files that it, uh, that it, uh, it's carved out of the USB stick. So we can go recover JPEG and then where the USB drive is, click copy and we'll paste that in there. Now what this is going to do is it's going to run through the USB stick and carve out the files that you think are deleted. Now I'm not only going to show you how to recover pictures but I will show you how to recover text files, PDFs and other sorts of data um, in the next step. So as you can see it's recovered seven pictures. So pictures that I may have deleted off from earlier. But as you can see there's network topologies there's the picture of our golf club, and there's the picture of the, the title is Pro V1 golf ball that we thought was gone. So now that you've seen how Recover JPEG works, it, it's great for recovering photos, but it has one downfall. It does just that. It recovers only JPEGs. So I'm going to run you through another program called Foremost. This, this program will carve out not only pictures of uh, different file types, uh, it will do PDFs, you know, and, and different file formats all together. So we'll go ahead and type in foremost. Oh. <clears throat> and you can see here there's a few options. So we can uh, specify the file type with dash, uh, dash lowercase t, um, the output and uh, verbose for, uh, for more information and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a file on the, uh, the desktop for our, uh, for our recovered files. So I'm just going to call it recover. So we'll run foremost, dash T. Now we can specify, as you can see up here, JPEG, comma, PDF, whatever and so on or we can just say all. I'll do V for verbose so we can get uh, the information and dash I and then the name of our device. 
So over here, we'll copy and we'll paste that in. We're going to use the dash O and we're going to tell it to put it in our desktop file called recover and then we'll hit enter. So just like recover JPEG, it's going to go through the flash drive and it's going to carve out any files that have been deleted and that we cannot see. So we'll give it a second and we'll go through. So as you can see the output here, it's listing the number of files, the name of the file, the size, the file offset, and then a comment. So for it looks like we're listing uh, the size of what looks like a picture and so on. So in the end it's going to tell you, okay, so it's found 135 JPEGs, uh, 6 HTML files, uh, EXE, PDFs, etc. So as you can see here, the recovery file that we created, it's neatly organized the files uh, for each file format. So you can go PNG. As you can see here, I had uh, Tux the Linux Penguin, which is uh, it's a picture uh, that didn't come up with the, the JPEG because it's not a JPEG uh, file format. The PDF, I have uh, the outline of when I was making a digital clock. The PDF, as you can see, I can open all these files. It looks like there was some files on this uh, USB before I got it. Uh, this is a USB I just got in the mail from uh, Rogers. We have our JPEGs. So as you can see here, we have the golf clubs, the golf ball, our network topologies again, and so on. Now these files here are what are called uh, false positives. It, uh, it thinks it's a photo, but it's, uh, it's not actually it. Um, some HTML files, if you can see, oh, there's nothing in that file. Okay, so this one looks like it has uh, uh, HTML, so we could, this is probably like a little web page. Click it and see if we can open it. As you can see here, we found some data, it's in, in French. Unfortunately, I'm not bilingual. And so on. So it's found some executables. Maybe we can run that in Wine on Linux and, and check out what it is, and so on. And it also makes you an audit file, which is the uh, the same output as you see here. It's just uh, neatly put in a file if you want to go over it after. Now, there's another thing that, uh, say, the police or something when they're after somebody uh, with to get the hard drive and whatnot. Um, instead of working right off the, the USB stick or right off the, the hard drive and whatnot and chances of corrupting it and then having no backup of your data, we can use a program called uh, DD or DCFLDD. Oh. All right, so we're going to go start that program. Uh, DCFLDD. Get the help options out here. Now, what this program does, it's, uh, it's designed to make a forensic copy uh, bit perfect and variable. So uh, use this when you need to know that the copy and subsequent copies that you're going to make are identical to the original drive. Um, it can also do hashing on the fly uh, to hash input data while it's being transferred to ensure data integrity. Uh, it can split outputs. Um, so you can make uh, multiple uh, images and, and whatnot. Uh, there's also two other programs in the same kind of family, uh, dd underscore rescue, which recovers uh, files from a damaged drive. It's just designed to uh, rebuild damaged files. And then there's just dd, which is a generic version uh, to make a bit perfect copy of a drive. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go make a draw, uh, an image copy of this USB stick. So just in case that uh, when you're working on it that we're not going to damage the actual drive that we're looking to get the, the output from. So we're going to use this command here, if, uh, so to read from file instead of standard in, and of equals file. So to, to write to in file, so our image, instead of standard out. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to move myself to the desktop uh, just so we have our file easily accessed. 
accessible. Um, Alright, so we have our command dcfldd. We're going to go if equals the name of our device. Paste that in there. And then we're going to go of equals, and I'm just going to call it image.dd. And as you can see here, oh, it's overlapped. It's created an image file. So as you can see, there's nothing on the USB. Um, maybe I should have put something on there to make it uh, easier to display the how it works. Uh, we're going to create a file um, in our mount directory. I'm just going to call it recover once again. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount the image that we just created. Called image.dd into mount recover. Now, if there was something on the file, you can go into the mount directory. You can see our file here and you can go into recover. And you'd be able to do an ls. And any files that were currently on the drive that weren't deleted would show up in here. So from here, now that we've mounted it, we can go ahead and run f foremost again. Now that uh, now that uh, we've uh, mounted the file and it's, uh, we can go ahead and use it. So we can go foremost dash t all v for verbose and then dash i and we can use our image instead of the actual drive as we've done before copying and pasting this right here so we'll go ahead we'll run that and we'll put the output to root desktop and I'll make a recover one so as you can see here it's gone through the image we've made and it's recovered the same thing we got tux or penguin whatever other files were on here from before we still have our our PDF files we can still open everything just as if it was live off the USB I can actually go ahead and unplug the USB and uh, as you can see here it's no longer showing up now there's one other program called scalpel um, if I'm correct, it's the same creators as Foremost. Uh, it's it's pretty much a few different things. There's a config file if you're going to use it. So we'll go to the Etsy uh, scalpel, and then there's this file here, scalpel config. So what we're going to have to do is we'll nano scalpel, and we'll go through the config file. Now you're going to have to uncomment some files, as you see I've done here. Uh, for the GIFs, the JPEGs, and whatnot. Uh, the, if you don't know how to uncomment a file, you just pretty much go and, uh, okay, so Apple QuickTime, say I want this video, I'm just deleting the hashtags is pretty much what I'm doing. So you can select what you want and what you don't want uh, Scalpel to search for. So we'll open up Scalpel again. There's a few options in here, and so on. If you want to uh, to play with that, uh, you know, set the output directory and whatnot. Some more advanced options. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll uh, we'll use Scalpel now. So we'll start with Scalpel, and then uh, our image that we created. So desktop is called uh, image.dd. Uh, right here. And then we'll specify the output dash zero or O, oh, sorry. Um, we're going to put it in uh, the desktop and into our folder called scalp. And we'll hit enter. And just like every other program we've been using, it's running through the, uh, the USB drive. Uh, okay, so it says scalpel is done. 
files carved 256 and the elapsed time is 4 seconds now the the drive isn't very big that we imaged so um, depending on the size you're using all of these tasks could take a while it could take a, uh, a while to make the image and so on so here's scalpel's output uh, we got another audit text uh, you know similar to uh, what we used before with uh, foremost um, kind of same concept uh, we have our PDFs some of the PDFs from before um, the PDF for my uh, my digital clock that I was making so pretty much the same files that we were coming across uh, before when we were uh, using other the other programs it's just a, a few different methods uh, we got our network topologies our golf ball our golf bag the clubs and uh, and so on so we have it looks like we have a false positive here uh, maybe another one there yeah these don't look like they're coming up with anything so we have our HTML files again if I'm correct it's this one that opens up so same same kind of deal like I was saying all right, so uh, I hope uh, you learned something how to recover your files in case you have an emergency or uh, just maybe to see what's on your buddy's drive when he lends it to you. So uh, take it easy till next time.